Hey everybody, Taylor with KC here. And in this video, we're gonna do an installation guide for our wiring harnesses. This specific harness is going to be to show you how to install either your Gravity Titan LED light bar or your Flex Era LED light bar. Um, they're basically the exact same harness. This is actually meant for the Gravity Titan light bar, but just a little note here that this end connector is the, really the big difference between the two harnesses. Uh, obviously it has a nice plug and the connector for the Titan. However, on the Flex Era, it's gonna look a little bit different. Each one of these wires is just gonna have a nice ring terminal on the end of that that goes directly onto the Flex Era light bar itself. So with that being said, otherwise it's basically the exact same harness for the Titan and the Flex Era light bar. So I think the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is get this thing unraveled. As I'm unraveling it, it's worth mentioning that the reason why we're doing this on a workbench rather than a vehicle is that it's easier to lay everything out to show you all where the different components of the wiring harness go. When we try to install it on a vehicle, obviously you have to deal with the battery and you have to deal with all the engine components and everything else kind of in the way. So it's just easier for this, um, but it's gonna be the same process when you go to install it in the garage onto your vehicle. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna break this thing up into a few different kind of components here. Right in the middle, the middle component is going to be your relay. So we're gonna get this thing all spread out and let me try and maybe clean this up nicely. So now that we have the core components of the different wiring harness kind of laid out and identified, what I'm gonna do is walk through a few different scenarios for this installation. The first one that we're gonna tackle first is kind of the OEM installation, which is using the wiring harness that we supply with the light bars and all of the components exactly as is. The second one that we're gonna cover later is how you're gonna connect this harness to a system like a Switch Pros or anything like that, where you wanna still retain the relay that we, that we included with our kit, but you don't want to have all the unnecessary stuff and you just wanna use your buttons to switch it rather than the switch that's included with our kit. Third and finally, you have a switch system that has a high enough uh, amperage circuit that you can cut out the relay and the fuses and the switch side from our harness and you really just need to connect the light bar to directly to that switch system. So let's go ahead and get started on that first system. First up, we're gonna cover the factory installation of the harness right as it comes from us at KC. So first things it's important to know, we're gonna save the connections to the battery till the very end that way we don't have to deal with live power going through any of this stuff. So depending on your application, um, it's gonna depend whether you work with the switch side first or the light bar side first. Typically, I'm gonna deal with the switch side first just because I wanna make sure I can get that through the firewall and do that whole thing easily and quickly first. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is the end that has the three uh, terminals on the end of it. This is what you're gonna to have to poke through your firewall and run to wherever inside of your vehicle near the driver's seat uh, where you wanna put your switch for your light bar. So typically you're gonna to wanna to run this all the way through. Once you have that location found and once you have the light, the wires all the way to that location, whether that's on your dash or near your kind of cup holder area, something along those lines, then you can take your switch and you're gonna to wanna to drill a three quarter inch wide hole for this. Then go ahead and do the connection, push these wires through that hole, connect everything, and then pop it right down into that. And then your switch is pretty much mounted. So uh, just a real quick col color guide for this. If you look at this switch, there is a zero in the middle and then there's one line on one side and two lines on the other side. Right in the middle is where the yellow is gonna go. So that pops right in. And then Jacob, can you remind me which goes where? Yeah. Right in the middle goes yellow. And then with the single line is where you're gonna connect the green wire. And then the double line is where you're gonna connect the white wire. So you just kind of feed them in and push them in until they kind of snap into position. They go right in. And now if we had our hole drilled and this was already kind of poking through it, we would push this whole unit directly through and then snap it right into place into that hole inside of our dash. So that's what it's gonna look like when it's all said and done. You've got your zero, your yellow, and then your white on the double, and then your green on the single line. Okay, so switch side done. Next, uh, the light bar. Depends if you're running it up the windshield um, or if you're mounting it onto the bumper, but you're gonna wanna route it cleanly, make sure you're avoiding any specific areas like headers where it's gonna be super hot or fans where you have things moving and spinning. 
You definitely don't want this to get all frayed out or melted because then that will short out of the thing, break the circuit, and you're just not gonna have a light that works anymore. So as you're running the side of the harness that goes to the light bar itself, just be aware of where you're running the thing. Um, make sure it's not touching anything that it shouldn't be touching, yada, yada, yada. So once you have that, just connect it to the light bar. Uh, these connectors pretty much only go one way. And for the Flex Era light bar, there is a spe specific um, orientation, top, middle, bottom, for where these plugs go. And we'll go ahead and put that diagram on the screen right now. So once you have that done, you've got your switch done. You've got your light bar connected. Now it's time to kind of finish the job, make sure everything works. It's pretty simple. This is our battery for the sake of uh, this video. So we've got our hot and then we got our ground. So you take your yellow, the ring terminal, connect it right to the hot, right to the red, the positive, and then you take your ground and go right to the black, the ground, and you're pretty much good to go at that point. So now it's always a good idea to make sure um, all of your fuses are into position. Your relay is fully clicked in and into the position that it needs to be. Again, the other the other fuses where it needs to be. And then you can go ahead and flick that switch and make sure your beautiful brand new Titan or Flexera light bar lights up. So that's number one, OEM factory KC configuration. All right, the next question that we wanna address is how do I connect my KC light bar to my Switch Pro system, my aux beam system, my S-Pod system, or any number of different aftermarket switch systems? So in order to do this, this is pretty simple, especially if you wanna retain the relay like we're gonna show right now. You really only need a couple tools. You're gonna need a good pair of cutters for the wire, uh, some, some tape, electrical tape, and then scissors to cut the tape. So this is very basic. You're gonna retain a lot of the wiring harness in order to do this. Um, basically this route allows you to use any circuit on your switch system, whether it's five amps or 30 amps, because you're keeping the relay that's included with our wiring harness. So in order to do this, you're gonna locate the side of the harness that goes to the switch, normally like we just covered in that last section. This is the side that has a green, a yellow, and a white. You're gonna to wanna to locate that yellow wire and you're gonna to wanna to make two cuts. You're gonna to wanna to grab your cutters and you're gonna to wanna to locate the side that's pretty much right on, the, on one side of the little fuse. You're gonna make that cut right there. And then you're gonna see that the rest of the yellow wire goes, has a fuse and the side with the terminal that goes right to the battery. You wanna keep all of this right here, but the side where it has the little fuse coming out and where it's done the, the junction two into one, you're gonna to wanna to cut it right at the base of that heat shrink. So I'm gonna grab my little cutters right here and cut that. And just as a reminder, as we're doing this, make sure this is not connected to the battery at this point, because if it is, and you are especially using the wrong tool, you're gonna to get a good little zap there. So now this is pretty much trash. So we're done with that. It's a really good, good idea at this point before we go further to grab your tape and to tape over that connection because once again, that is hot. So we wanna make sure that we cover that and just make sure that uh, you don't get any water in there, no rust is forming, anything like that. So we're just gonna do a couple tape. This is not gonna be my finest tape job of all time. Um, while we're on the camera here, I'm just trying to do it quickly. Get rid of that guy. You're done with your tape. You're done with your scissors at this point. You're actually done with your cutters as well. So you got that all done. Now you're gonna go back. You have one extra wire here on your switch side. You're gonna to wanna to pull this yellow wiring out of the loom. The yellow wire itself is now pretty much, you're done with it. You don't really need it for anything. So you can pull it all the way out just like that. If you wanna save this, it's really nice thick gauge wire. So you can save this for a future garage project, whatever you want, but you don't need it for this one. Now, what you're left with is two end terminals, a white and a green. This is what you're gonna to connect to your S-Pod, your Switch Pros, your aux beam system, anything like that. This is what's gonna turn your light bar on using your aftermarket switch system. So to cover what does what, the green is gonna be for the full white output mode and the white wire, contrary to what you're gonna be thinking, the white wire is actually what's gonna activate the amber mode on your Titan light bar or your Flexera light bar. 
That being said, make those connections however you do it. Some call for butt splices, some you can just plug right into the wires, just depends on whatever your switch system says. It'll guide you through how to do that um, when you open the instructions for your switch system. Then after that, you've got your light bar already connected. You've got your switch connected. Now you're back to connecting the, the stuff to the battery. So you got your yellow wire and you can go yellow wire right to your positive. You can take your black and go right to your ground. And that's pretty much it. So you just wanna do your connection. This is our battery, right? So yellow goes to red, black goes to black. Pretty simple. That is configuration number two. All right, so for the third and the final configuration for how to wire up your KC light bar to an S-Pod, a Switch Pros, Aux Beam, anything like that, this is gonna be the cleanest wiring option, but you're going to be removing the relay and the fuses and all of that that we included with our harness, and instead you're gonna be relying on the circuits in your aftermarket switch system. So you're gonna to wanna to take a look at the specs of the light bar that you are trying to wire up, whether it's a 50 inch flex air light bar, a 39 inch gravity Titan light bar, whatever that may be. And you're gonna to wanna to look at that amperage rating and make sure you have a circuit on your switch system that's capable of handling the amperage draw that the light bar is going to be asking for. Typically you wanna allow for a little bit of variance. So you know, if the spec is, is saying that, hey, this light bar is gonna be drawing 24 amps, you probably don't wanna to go to a 25 amp circuit. You wanna be a little bit of safe and have a little bit of room for margin for error in that power system. So go up to a 30 amp circuit or something along those lines. So that's the biggest, most important thing that you know from this step. Make sure you select the proper circuit to connect your light bar to. Once you've done that disclaimer out of the way, we can kind of go over what we're gonna cut out. At this point, again, we've got this harness laid out into three different kind of zones or three different components here. You're gonna get rid of the entire switch system from us. You're also gonna get rid of the relay and the thing that connects to the battery, uh, the, yellow, the yellow wire right here. You're gonna keep the black wire with the ring terminal on it, and then you're gonna keep some of the white wire that goes to the switch. So pretty simple to get started, just to kind of clean things up. You're gonna to wanna to go to your the red wire and the black wire that come out of the light bar side of the harness and that go into the relay. Typically I leave just a couple inches there and then you're gonna to wanna to snip the black and the red. Again, remember, there's two blacks. Keep the black that has the ring terminal connected. So keep all of that right there and just simply snip it right where it's gonna go into the relay itself. This is pretty thick wire, so make sure you're using some good cutters. There you go. Now, we've got all that dialed right there. The next thing you can do, just to kind of make it simple, is cut the green. It doesn't really matter where you cut it. This is all trash. You can save this for a future project if you're good at wiring. Still all perfectly good components. And then at this point, now, all you have to do is go to your loom here and pull out the green. This green is also either trash or in the reusable bucket that we all keep in our garages. And this is pretty much everything that you need now at this point to connect. So there's a couple things that we got to do here to kind of finish this job up nicely. Um, but the white wire, once again, is going to go to your switch for your amber mode on your Titan or your Flexera light bar. So this is really long. You might not need all of this. Uh, Jacob and I were talking about it. We like to have extra white wire just in case. So what you can do to clean things up, it's just kind of whatever you want to do at this point. You can go through and you can kind of cut just the little terminal off the end of it, get rid of that, and then slip the sleeving off. You can get rid of the sleeving, the tubing, that's all just kind of protective. And now you've got all this white wire. Once you do your installation, you can cut this to length. This is what's going to connect directly to your switch system, again, for the amber mode. So again, we just have plenty of extra right now. Again, you can cut this to length when the time comes. Then we're gonna move over to this side. Right here, you have now um, a red, a black, and another black coming out. You don't need this extra black at all, so you can kind of clean this up and trim it down a little bit further. That went flying across the room. And then you can heat shrink or heat shrink or do some electrical tape over that to make sure that that black wire doesn't have any exposed copper inside of it or anything. And just clean that up. Then, depending on what you need, 
Your red wire here is what's going to power the white output mode on your Titan or your Flexera light bar. So this right here is what's going to be connected to the high power circuit for your for the for the high power mode and then again the white is going to go to the low power mode. So pretty much at that point you're good to go with those two. Those are your powers, right? Then to ground your light bar you can either, it depends on what your switch system calls for. Some want every single circuit grounded. You can connect this to one of the grounds for that, or you can run this right to a ground somewhere else on your chassis or et cetera on your vehicle. With that being said, that's the bulk of it. That's the most complex. Again, it's really important to take a look at the specs for both the high power mode on the Titan or the Flexera and the Amber mode for both of those light bars as well. And then just make the connections to your aftermarket switch system. And that's pretty much it. Jacob, did I cover everything for uh, the different switches? Cool. So that being said, uh, sorry that this is a little bit of a long video, a little bit con a little bit complex, but we wanted to make sure that we covered all of these different wiring scenarios that people have been asking us over the years. Um, it's the, this is exactly how we do it in all of our company vehicles because we like to use aftermarket switch systems. But for those that only have a couple lights in theirs, the normal KC OE configuration works perfect. So that being said, if you're a little bit confused, if you have questions about how to do the wiring harness, please leave them in our comment section and we'll do our best to get back to you. If you're in the middle of installing this stuff on your vehicle right now, it's probably a good idea to pick up the phone and give us a call at our customer service team. They're super good at answering all these wiring related questions. They know everything and they can kind of walk you right through that entire process. So that being said, hopefully you all found this informational. Hopefully you guys found it helpful. Thank you all for tuning in and remember to adventure further.